Warren Eckstein here. Today we're going to talk about a very, very important subject. You know, so many young couples nowadays postpone child rearing for their two income scenarios. They're both working eight hours a day, but let's face it, after the first six months the honeymoon's over, they're a little bored of each other maybe, so they go out and they purchase or adopt a dog or a cat. And let's face it, this dog or cat that comes into their home is now their baby. The grandparents come over and it's say hello to Grandma Jane and uncles come over and aunts come over, the neighbors come over. This dog is everything to them. They take it to the park, they take it to the beach, they take it on Sunday rides, they take it on picnics. But then a year or so down the road, they decide, you know what, maybe it's time to have our human baby. But what happens to this poor dog or cat when the human baby comes into the household? Lots of times, there's a lot of controversy, a lot of turmoil that goes on, and so many dogs and cats wind up at shelters when the baby's born. And nothing, as far as I'm concerned, could be more abusive. You can take the time to teach your pets to get along with a newborn baby. I kind of call it what to expect from your pet when you're expecting. And it's no different than first pet psychology or first child psychology. You need to get your dog or your cat accustomed to all of the things that are going to be there when the baby ultimately arrives. So how do you do that? How do you prepare for the arrival of a baby? First of all, and the most important thing that you can do, is make sure that you take the time to do some good, solid, basic training with your dogs. And that's so important, guys. I don't care whether your dog jumps through hoops of fire, rolls over, speaks five languages, but every dog should at least know the basic commands. He'll sit, stay down, and come. And the reason for that is, when the baby comes into the household and the dog goes to do anything, jump up playfully, you have no way of controlling the dog other than, no, 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 bad dog, fooey, wait till daddy comes home. Bottom line is, what you're doing at that point is, you're right off the bat, you're establishing a negative relationship between the dog or the cat and the baby. You don't want to do that. So how do you prepare your dogs or your cats? Now you guys are, well, you're not pregnant, but you guys are pregnant. Um, what is your biggest fear about bringing a baby into your household? Um, mostly how this one's going to react and if, you know, I've had uh, family saying, are you going to get rid of the dog? And we're like... We'd see, like I would get rid of the family that said that. Or we don't want to, but we want to see if she's, you know, if, if she's the type of dog that we can work with that can, you know, be safe with our baby. Well, rest assured, we'll get you to that point. Now, what's your biggest fear? Well, I mean, I have three cats, and like you said, they were at my babies for the last ten years. And actually, I'm more concerned that they will be completely unhappy or just hide all the time. And I want to have them included too, so they don't feel left out. So you want your pets to be part of the family, baby included. And your, your feelings? Well, my cat, um, when he gets out of sort, he tends to pee on whatever is around. <laughs> uh, wait till the baby comes. If it's good for this new cat to pee in the house, then it's good for me to pee in the house. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm worried that he's going to get out of sorts and, and just be, be a behavioral problem. But more importantly, that he's going to be feeling upset. And that's feeling why, concerned. That's why he's going to be peeing on the couch cushion. And, and one of the things I'm going to teach everyone today is, is the concept that your pet should be happy and excited when the baby comes home, not the other way around. And I have a whole program we're going to go through. And you have a Doby at home, so that's a big dog. I'm sure everyone in the world says, oh, you can't have a Doberman and kids at the same time. Yeah, my mother-in-law, she's really afraid that my dog will hurt the baby. She's very hyper. She's only one year old. And I'm afraid that she gets excited. She might jump or... Well, first of all, let me just say that you should be more fearful of your mother-in-law going after the baby than your <laughs> doberman going after the baby. That's right off the bat. But you have to understand that just like people, just like a, a child that's the first child, when you bring the baby into the household and all this attention is going to go to the baby, of course the dog or the cat is going to be concerned. So you can't do that. So the first thing you need to do, now generally speaking, we have nine months to prepare for the arrival of the baby. So it should never be, okay, I'm having a baby tomorrow, what am I going to do with my dog or cat? So how do you prepare your dog or your cat for the arrival? The first thing I recommend that you do is actually simulate the fact that there is a baby in the house before the baby actually comes to the house. That means that the bassinet, the changing table, the cribs, all of that should be in the house prior. Now there are some people 
being a Romanian background myself, you know, gypsy, I know that there are some people that have superstitions. So some people are superstitious about bringing stuff into the household before the baby arrives. If that be the case, have a friend or a neighbor that can maybe set up a room or a family member so you can get your dog or your cat accustomed to those type of uh, things. Now, once we've set up the room, the next thing we have to do is desensitize the dog or the cat to what it's going to be like when the baby comes into the house. So what is that going to be? We're going to have all these new items in the house. We're going to have baby lotion. We're going to have baby oil. We're going to have powder, which, by the way, can be very irritating to a dog or a cat. So prior, prior to the dog or uh, the baby coming home, I recommend you take some of the powder, just put a little bit on the floor so the dog gets used to it. What I do is I'll take a little baby oil, and just to get the dogs accustomed to it, what I'll actually do is just take a drop and maybe put it on their nose. And they may lick it off, they may not lick it off, but at least they're used to the smell. So now, when the baby comes, they're already used to the smell of the oil, they're already used to the smell of the powder, they're already used to the smell of Vaseline or whatever you're using for diaper rash, I guess, baby stuff. And <laughs> the other thing that you have to take into consideration is things like this. This is a teething ring, and it makes a lot of noise. You can see the way the dogs are kind of looking at it. Now, all of these strange noises are going to really make the dog or the cat say, hey, what's going on? So again, prior to the baby arriving, these items should be in the house, not as a teaser to play with the dog, but when the dog is playing with his own toy, you can actually simulate like the baby's here, so he hears this noise while he's getting positive attention, and that's really, really important. Now, you, you brought up a great point about your cat peeing, right? Now, you have to understand that, that dogs and cats claim territory or mark territory by peeing. So, of course, when the new baby comes home, he says, wait a second, I've been here for all this time, and all of a sudden this new thing comes in the house, he's peeing all over, and he's getting praised for peeing, he's not getting yelled at for peeing. What's this all about? So the bottom line is, we need to prepare your pet for the arrival of the baby. So this is where a diaper comes into play. Now here's the problem. How do you get a dirty diaper before you have a baby? Uh, they don't sell them, I tried to buy them, believe me. So what you do is you take a diaper like this, and you take a little mixture of ammonia and a little mixture of water, and you put that in the diaper. It actually simulates the smell of what a baby's going to smell like. That's very, very, very important. So you get the dog adjusted to the scent beforehand. Then what I do is I understand, I anticipate, that when the baby be, uh, arrives, the, the, the dog's going to be out of sort, or the cat's going to be angry, upset, hurt, feel pushed aside, well, how do you prevent that? Well, the first thing you need to do is socialize the dog or the cat to what a baby is all about. Now, I use a doll like this. This is an antique, by the way. This is very, very old. Uh, but the reason I use this is because it really does kind of act like a real baby. You can put it on the ground, um, and you can actually see it move around. And it actually makes different sounds. I'll just let you watch that for a second. And you can see how the, the dog kind of looks at it a little bit. And what is this? I don't know what this is all about. What am I going to do with this? Now, see, if, if that were, if I were, you hear the baby actually punch. If I were doing this with my pet right now, that, that doll would be wearing a dirty diaper. Okay, I'd be using one of those diapers with the ammonia in it, so it sounds exactly like that. I would name the doll something close, if you're superstitious, something close to what you're going to name the baby. You know, if the baby's going to be Joe, call it the, the doll Mo, whatever. But again, this way, this way, let me, let me retrieve my doll over here. <laughs> this way, what happens is the dog is already adjusted to something moving around on the floor. But more important, the dog or cat becomes adjusted to you talking to something else, you holding something else. So this has to be really treated like a real baby. In fact, the two of you, when you're home at night with a doll similar to this, when you're sitting around watching, I know you look like Seinfeld people, when you're watching the reruns of Seinfeld, okay, what you do is you sit there with the doll, give it a name, you actually simulate the feeding of the, of, of the baby, you talk to the baby as you're giving the same attention to the dog, very positive. Dogs learn through the associative memory, as do cats. So if the dog or cat associates positive things with the doll, then the adjustment to the baby is going to make all the difference in the world. Now here's some tips that you would never think about. Before you come home from the hospital, the dog or the cat should go into the veterinarian, have his nails clipped, have, it, have him checked for internal parasites, external parasites, 
And we talked about this before. I asked you if you've done any training with little Peanut over here. And you say limited training. And I'm watching Peanut, and you're right. It is limited. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, the important thing is that to do some basic training, with not so much with the cats, but with the dogs right now, is important. First of all, it's positive attention that the dog's getting. He's learning something new. And more importantly, if the dog is doing something wrong, you have a positive way to control him. I mean, so many people don't take the time to train their dogs. And I've walked into homes and I said no, and the dog comes thinking that's his name because he's heard it so often. No, 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 no. So the bottom line is we want to make sure that, we want to make sure that everything is very, very, very positive. And, and the way to do that is to make sure the dog associates anything that's going to be there with the baby beforehand. Now, we also have a, uh, a CD. And what this CD does, um, and we're going to let you hear it, but what this CD actually does, it's, it was made by one of my listeners many years ago. And what she did is she, I, I told her back then, this is how long ago it was, you need to use a tape recorder. Now people don't even know what a tape recorder is. So, <laughs> so what she did is she made a tape recording and ultimately made a CD of her baby making all the sounds a baby would make, her neighbor's babies, her friend's babies. And what they do is for nine months, they'll play this at night when it's quiet in the house and they're with their dogs or their cats and they're sitting around and they play it at a very low volume, barely audible, while the dog's being massaged or the dog's getting a treat. And then over a period of months, they increase that volume gradually till it's almost the actual sound or the volume of what a real baby would sound like. That's going to make a tremendous amount of difference because a dog's sense of hearing and a cat's sense of hearing is approximately 10 to 20 times better than ours. And remember now, from a cat's point of view, a baby crying with that high-pitched cry almost sounds like another cat that may be in distress. So from a cat's perspective, it's real important to get that tape recorder or that CD playing on a regular basis. Now, you've prepared for all this. You've played with the doll for nine months. You've got the dog and the cat used to all these scents. You've been playing with the doll. You might want to pull the shades down if you're doing it. You've been playing with this doll. You've got the diapers, the simulated diapers. That's all done now. And now you're ready to go off to the hospital and have the baby. So what happens? You just assume you're going to go to the hospital, spend a day or two with the hospital, bring home the baby, and you're going to be the Brady Bunch. It doesn't work that way, okay? What's going to happen is you've been away for a couple of days, so before you go to the hospital to have the baby, have a neighbor, a friend, someone the dog knows very well, try to keep the dog's or the cat's feeding schedule as close to normal as you possibly can. There's going to be enough things going on when the baby comes home. Try to keep that feeding schedule, that walking schedule, exactly the same as it was. Now, you're going to be home. You're going to be at the hospital. You're old hat. So when you come home from the hospital, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get out of the car and you walk into the house with the baby and you're going to say, oh, look at the baby and the dog's going to jump up and you're going to say, no, get away, you're going to hurt the baby. So the first association your dog or your cat's going to have is negative with this child. So what you do is you walk in the house, you sit in the car with the baby for five or ten minutes, you come into the house, get the greeting of the dog, the dog's going to be excited to see you, play with the dog for five or ten minutes, then you walk into the house with the baby because you've been there all the time, the dog's not missing you as much as it's missing you. Does that make sense to all mm -hmm. of you guys? It makes all the difference in the world. Now once the baby arrives, What's going to happen is these same people that came over and called this the grand dog or the aunts and the uncles and all the friends are going to come to your front door and they're going to be bearing gifts. And what are these gifts going to be? Might be TV rings, might be stuffed animals. And the dogs and the cats are going to say, wait a second, I've been here a long time. All of a sudden, these people are coming over. When they came over, they gave me a little treat for a nickel. They're buying these great big stuffed animals for the baby. What's going on here? I'm a little jealous. You need to go to one of the stores, pet stores, before the baby comes home. You need to take a big bag of pet toys and treats. That goes by the front door. And I don't care if you have the most aggressive, assertive grandparents in the world. They must stop for five or ten minutes, play with the pets before they get to see their grandchild. Same thing with aunts and uncles, same thing for neighbors, everything else. So now what's happening? is what would normally be a negative association at the front door. Everyone's coming over bearing gifts. Look at this. Everyone who knocks on the door has a treat, has a new toy, something special for me to play with. Now the association of people coming over to see the baby is really positive 
because the dogs and the cats are getting something important as well. Does that make sense to all you guys? Because it really, it's re really common sense, but so many people are so preoccupied with the birth of the baby, they don't take into consideration what's going to happen to the pet. Then you're going to have people like your mother-in-law, might be a very nice lady, saying, you've got to get rid of the dog, you've got to get rid of the dog. Dogs and babies, they can't get along. Let me give you a physiological reason why you should tell your, your, your mother-in-law not to worry. Brand new study just came out a couple of weeks ago, a medical study saying that children, infants, that grow up with dogs and cats in their home are much less apt to develop allergies as they get older. For years, pediatricians told us the complete opposite. You have a baby in the house, you've got to worry about allergies. But what they're saying now is because of the, uh, the dogs and the cats being there, the infants actually build up an immune system. So that's the new study. And this study is just out of Cornell University, so it's, it's right off the presses, which makes a lot of sense to me. So for all those mothers, you've got to get rid of the dog because of allergies, it's not clean. That's absolute nonsense. The only thing I do recommend for you is even though the cases have been so far and few between, while you're pregnant, do not change the litter box. It's just that simple. Have someone else in the household change the litter box. You don't want to take any chances. But with the, the, the concept of giving a dog away or giving a cat away because you're having a baby is totally unacceptable to me. Totally unacceptable. There's no reason in the world that any dog or any cat really can't learn how to get along with the child if you just take the basic steps and make it that. It really is that easy. The other thing that's also important is that you separate your time. In other words, there's time for mom and dad to be with the baby. There's time for mom and dad to be with the family. And then there's got to be time for mom and dad just to be with Peanut, Bonnie, and whatever else in Menagerie. You've got four dogs, two cats, whatever. Yeah. So in other words, there has to be that private time as well. It's also important to keep the dogs well exercised. We were joking before we started doing this that if you were to go into my backyard right now, it looks like the U.S. Open was just played. There were so many tennis balls. But that's what you need to do. You have to have the best way to establish a positive relationship is psychologically something we call distraction therapy. So if the dog is doing something, kind of you're not sure of with the baby, rather than correct the dog and say no, because we don't want that negative association, find something very special to distract the dog. For example, I recommended to a client many, many months ago, I just spoke to her recently and it worked out fine. Um, she was sitting, I guess there's something called a nursing chair. She was sitting there and she was nursing her baby. And when she was nursing the baby, the, the, the cat would always come over and kind of bother her at that point. And she was a little fearful because, you know, it's kind of a, I don't know exactly how it feels, but not comfortable, I guess. So what I did is I found one toy. Besides all of the cat's regular toys, I found one toy that, that this cat was addicted to. But the only time the cat saw that toy is when mom was sitting in that chair nursing the baby. So now the cat came into the room, rather than being so focused on the baby, the cat was more focused on the special toy than he knows he gets when the baby's there. Again, that makes all the difference in the world. The obedience training with your dog, let me tell you, it's actually, it's almost better to have a larger dog with a young child, because they can put up with the nonsense of the young child, and then the toddler when they get older. And I know you have Adobe, and I know people have all these things about Dobies. They were, let me give you a little background on Dobies, okay? I worked with one of the top breeders of Dobies in the country. Her name was Peggy Adams. She passed away 30 years ago. She was 90 years old when she passed away. There is not a more gentler dog than a Dobie. They have a bad reputation based on the fact that a lot of stupid people have them. It's like pit bulls. A lot of stupid people have them. But you have a great dog, and if you take the time to socialize it with the baby, they're going to grow up to be best friends. So, what's, what's the best way to introduce, let's say you want to introduce the dog to the baby on a comfortable level for everybody. Most people would think that what they would do is they would get down, okay, and they would hold the baby here. Peanut, say hello to the baby, Peanut. You want to say hello to the baby, Peanut, huh? I want to say hello to the baby, Peanut. Now, what I did is very wrong because if Peanut was more assertive, she would be over here kind of pawing at the baby, and I would be having to say, no, you're going to hurt the baby. So the way to introduce a baby is always to have your knee here, 
your baby here, your dog here. So now the dog is over here. The dog can raise its paw, but it's going to go on your leg. The dog can lick the baby. By the way, a dog's mouth is cleaner than most humans. People don't well think about it. The dog's teeth are much further apart, so the bacteria doesn't form. The worst bite you can take, take it from me, I've been bitten by everything, is a human or monkey bite, okay? So the way you introduce the dogs is I would have my knee here. I would say, peanut, peanut. And this way, if Peanut were to jump up, I wouldn't have to say no, because he's not going to hurt the baby. Just little things like that make all the difference in the world. So what are you going to tell your mother-in-law now? That my family members... That's right. The family members include the dog. And also, the other concept is that if you handle it properly when they're young, they say that kids that grow up with dogs, infants that grow up with dogs and cats in the household, grow up a lot more stable and kids that don't, eh, I kind of missed me, I guess. But they, they say that because, think about this. When the kid starts walking, when the kid starts crying and doing things wrong, which kids do, you're going to have to say, no, you know, you shouldn't do that, you should do this. He's going to go to school, and the teacher's going to say, you should have got an A instead of a C or a D. The only totally non-judgmental thing in life for your kid growing up is your dogs and your cats. They could care less about whether the, 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 the baby peed in its pants. They can care less if the baby's crying. So the baby has this relationship that they establish with their pets where no matter what they're doing, they're best friends. And that's really what we want to do. Now, that being said, common sense dictates that you should never, ever leave an infant alone with a pet. Just common sense. Now, for my cat people, I'm sure you heard these stories that if you have the baby in the crib, the cat's going to jump up and suck the breath out of the baby, and the baby's <laughs> going to die. 30 years, 30 years I've been professionally working with animals, and I've yet to see breath sucked out of any baby by any animal, okay? So just common sense dictates, though, that you just never leave a baby unsupervised when there's a pet around. The hardest thing that you guys are going to have to do is convincing family members, friends, and relatives what you're doing is important. These are part of your family. They've been part of your family before. Is this everyone's first baby? So it's been part of your family before the baby arrived. It's going to be part of your family after the baby arrives. Giving the dog away is not an option, Mom. It's just not an option. It's not going to happen. Teaching the dog to behave around the baby is what we're going to do. And at the same time, teaching the baby to react around the pet is also important, not letting them pull the ears and, and pull this. So that's really the, the premise of, 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 of making sure that when your babies do arrive, that they arrive in a positive, upbeat, fun way so that they can grow up with their best friends. And that's what it's all about. Just remember that there's going to be times you're going to get upset with the dog because you're going to be stressed out. You've got the baby, the phone's ringing, and this is going on. Everyone's going crazy. You're also going to notice and this is only from a behaviorist point of view, that when you have the baby and the baby's sleeping, you're going to be talking to the baby. You know, oh, what a cute, oh, this is mommy, you know, with Google, Gaga, Wow, or whatever you guys say. Now, when you're sitting there, God, this is one ugly baby. When you're sitting <laughs> here and you're talking to this, okay, and the baby's sleeping and the dogs and cats are going to run over to you and, and you're going to say, why are the dogs and cats bothering me now? I'm just sitting here with them. That's your question. The baby's sleeping. There's nobody else in the house but you, the dogs, and the cats. You're talking. Who do you think your dogs and cats think you're talking to? <laughs> Makes common sense. It's like the person who called me up and said, Warren, my cat only bothers me when I'm on the phone. You're on the phone? What does a cat know from the phone? There's no one else in the house. Who does your cat think you're talking to? Of course the cat's going to come running when you're on the phone. No different than with the baby. So the same concept, the same concept is true here. So when the, the dog or the cat comes over, again, it's always a positive upbeat relationship. Now, while you're going through the pregnancy, I don't have to tell you, but hormones change, there's anxieties, there's stresses, there's, I've been told, a lot of mood swings. Um, so, so basically, what you need to do is prepare. Your dog is, is, notice that your dog could care less about your mood. My dog could care if I'm in a good mood, a bad mood. My dog could care less if I had an argument with someone, if I just hit the million dollars. Could care less. So that's the stability factor why you're going through this pregnancy. So it's a real important time for you to take that, that bond and really bond with the dog. Keep the dogs exercised. From your perspective, if my cats were coming in the house, 
uh, if my cats were in the house and I was bringing the baby home tomorrow, in my house there would be cardboard boxes all over the place, there would be paper bags all over the place, there would be organic catnip growing all over the place. Um, and the reason for the boxes is because you can change them every day, so there's always something new in the house for the cats to investigate, and they're not so focused on this new baby coming into the house. You can be, you can be really good with the boxes, you can cut holes in them, one on top of the other. And remember, these boxes have all different smells from the supermarkets and places, so the cats are already interested in those. Now, your cats are strictly indoor cats. No, they're both indoor and outdoor. See, I'm a big fan of indoor only. Well, I mean, they just only go into the backyard. To so it's not that they're wondering. Okay, so they just go into your back. They use the litter box? One does use the litter box, the other two will yeah. strictly go outside. Okay, well, when you have the baby, it's very possible that the cats are going to want to spend more time in the house. So how are we going to get the cats that don't use a litter box to understand that a litter box is good to go in? They've never used litter before, right? They, you know what? In the beginning they did, but, but now, now they I don't. guess it's more comfortable to just... So what you do is you get a new litter box when the baby's born. But instead of putting litter in the litter box, you take some grass and dirt from outside in the backyard where they go. Put that in the litter box. And then gradually increase the litter, decrease the grass and dirt, and they'll become accustomed to it. And they're probably going to want to stay in the house more. Mm -hmm. Or some cats, depending on how loud the baby is. Some cats would rather get at us. Does anyone have any questions for me? Any, any, any serious problems that you think you're going to face? You know, I'm wondering about, you know, you have the changing table and the crib. I mean, I bought a cat tent for the crib for, you know, just at first. But how do you, you know, kind of stop your cats to sleep on the new furniture or, you know, I mean, not that I wouldn't mind, but like when you have the cat hair all over the place once the baby is there, when you have to change the baby and the cat is sleeping on so, it. So your, I guess your question to me is then how do you keep the cat off, like the changing table? Right. How do you keep the cat out of the crib? Uh -huh. um, it's interesting because we just did, a, just did a piece before you guys came on how to build the perfect legal cat house. And, okay. and okay. one of the things we recommended was ideas for keeping cats off countertops, which is a big problem that people have. So here's what you do is because you're bringing those item into the, items into the house before the baby arrives, what I'm going to recommend that you do is take a piece of cardboard, cut it out to the size of your crib, cut out another piece of cardboard to the size of your changing table, or whatever pieces of furniture you don't want your cat to go on. Take some wide strips of double stick tape and put that on the cardboard. Put the cardboard in the areas where you don't want the cats to go. Now, the, 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 the double stick tape doesn't hurt them, but it's like kitty flypaper. They don't like walking on it. So that's one of the ways we can keep the cats off the furniture. The other thing we had recommended earlier on in severe cases, I don't recommend this right off the bat, but if you have a cat that just refuses, on that double stick tape, blow up a couple of balloons and put them on the double stick tape so the cat walks on the balloons, the balloon breaks, like God said, get off here. He gets the idea, okay? But you don't want to go in there and you don't want to chase the cat. You don't want to yell at the cat. Say, get off there, get off there. Because what you're going to do is make him feel bad about that room and you want to make it positive. If you have nurseries already set up, every night what your job should be, I said this earlier, sitting there with the doll that looks like the baby, sitting in that room, simulating the fact that you may be feeding the baby, talking to the baby, changing the baby, goes for you too. So in other words, it goes for everyone involved, husbands as well. They have to spend more time in that baby's room so that cat really associates the baby's room with something positive. I guess if I were to give you a bottom line here, it's if the dog or the cat associates only good things with the arrival of the baby, doesn't it make common sense that they're going to grow up to be best friends? That's what it's all about. So the next time someone says, listen, you got to get rid of your dog, your cats are going to suck the breath out of your baby. This dog's absolutely nuts. He's going to pee on them, whatever. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Do anticipate a couple of problems. Do anticipate the occasional little accident from a dog or a cat. Because again, even though you've simulated the scent of it, they're going to pick up on the scent of it. Let the dog, let the cat smell the baby. Let them be around the baby. Don't be fearful of it. Let them get to know each other. Don't be one of those mothers that's, oh, no, 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 no. The minute you do that, you're going to create a negative response. So, I want to say congratulations to all of you on, on, on the expecting of your baby. Um, and if you follow the methods I suggested, it's going to work. I remember years ago, before I developed this approach, I was doing lectures and seminars at Lamaze classes on the East Coast, and, and writing for magazines on what to expect from your pet. And no one had ever really taken that approach. But I guess because of my radio show, I get so many grandparents and parents saying, 
you know, we're expecting a child. What are we going to do with our baby? I, you know, what are we going to do with the dog? And what are we going to do with the cat? And, 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 and so I had to come up with some way of organizing it. And just so you know, it's been doing it for like over 20 years now, this segment, and everyone absolutely that's gone through it has had a really good positive relationship with their dog or their cat. And in some cases, it's birds and horses. So it can work out fine. It's just a matter of common sense. Take the time and never forget, never forget that I know you're going to love your baby. I know you're going to adore the new baby when they come home. But don't forget, just because they have four paws and a little bit more hair, they're still part of the family and they should be treated that way. And I appreciate you all coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.